welcome to my channel welcome to um a whip and chat <laughs> i was gonna say a quick whip and chat it's probably not going to be quick for you it may be quick for me <laughs> it's sunday afternoon late afternoon dinner has got to be done i'm probably going to do this in two bursts we'll see what happens i have my tea half drunk sophie is actually jumping around the couch not recommended um i'm gonna get these l's on the edge of her arm sorted out uh what am i gonna use i might use this one this is a three i think this pen is from richcraft uh this is galaxy by erica the goober um from DAC, if you weren't already aware. Um, Erica does cartoony kind of art. Um, I'm not sure how, it's, it's pretty good. I haven't used this pen in ages. It's a rich craft pen. He always seems to do his pens in this particular kind of cut. I don't know if that's because he's not um, overly skilled as a pen turner or it's just his sweet spot his signature pen or what um he does do pens in different thicknesses i've got this skinny one and i also have a great big chubby boy that is potentially a little bit too chubby for me um to work on overly long um it's um yeah it's I can't really see it. Um, no. All I know is, oh yeah, there it is. It's, it's not in my everyday jar. It's <laughs> big difference between the two. Yeah. Anyway, let's um catch you up on uh, life and. I'll see how far I can get with um, Sophie jumping around the couch. Oh dear. Um, work has just been work this week. Um, I um, worked the five days. Um, had a couple of appointments in amongst them, just kind of giving me a bit of a brain break. Um, that kind of thing. Um, I'm a little bit nervous I'm going to run out of drills. But hopefully there's tons and it looks like water, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> you know, how it seems to be way more than it actually is. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm hoping for. And I'll have, you know, just the right amount left over. I may not even need to open one of the big bags or a couple of the bigger bags that I have. We'll see. Doesn't faze me if it gets decanted into a smaller bag. This really is a sweet spot. Um, some people have said that they were talking about multi-placers and, you know, what multi-placer do you use? To be honest, you use the multi-placer for the job. So in this case, a lot of these placings are actually, you know, three or four across. So use a three or a four placer. It's no big deal to go with a smaller one. Now, a lot of these are fours and potentially I could be wasting each point of drop. So I may go and find my four placer. But the um, blue tack in this pen hasn't been used forever and look how good it is with the picking up it's cool so we'll see how far we can go with the three and now we're into the four again okay and of course if you're using a bigger pen you can always put less drills on the pen than holes it needs so if it's a seven placer you could just pick up three drills 
you're certainly not stuck with always picking up seven drills because you've got seven placers or seven across. All right, I'm gonna find my four. Here is my four on a diamond pens pen. And you can see just on the side, the four. Um, I'm just gonna move the blue tack a bit, get it fresh, and that's it, ready to go. And we'll see how it picks up. And again, this pen hasn't been used in forever. I don't know if wax does quite the same thing. Any of you wax users, do you find that the wax will pick up after a certain amount of time? Now, these are all pointing up. We don't have an overly dusty house though. Now, I'm gonna pick up two, one at each end because one's going there and one's going there. Alright. Um, today I have actually been out with my stitchy group. Um, some new faces there um, and some old faces. Not in age. So it's always kind of fun catching up what they're working on and all that kind of thing. Um, I brought um, donuts today. <laughs> They inhaled them. It was funny. It was like, oh, Lady Hester Donuts. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I went to the market on the way through and got Lady Hester Donuts and cut them up into thirds so that there was enough for everyone. That was the hope. Um, and of course, kept a lemon curd all for myself. Yum. Um, I think we decided to bail on dinner today with being a roast because <laughs> we hadn't taken anything out of the freezer so we're gonna cook some lamb chops probably in the traditional fare that we usually have it which would be mashed potato and steamed veggies um, maybe a little bit boring but that's okay um, I've been trying with my back to consciously stand um, so that I'm not twisting. Um, I actually don't get to see the physiology, exercise physiologist I think he's called. Um, I don't get to see him for two weeks. So I'm just trying to maintain myself in the interim period. I actually called into a furniture store on the way back from my coaching on Friday to have a look at the chairs there and found one that may work. Um, it's got a gel seat, like memory foam, but it's got a back that's got not just a lumber twisty bit, it's actually got three lumber bits that you can twist so I can and then I was sitting in the chair and he's kind of going yeah you see you're perfectly aligned in that and I was actually feeling it in the top of my shoulders as well whereas when I went back to work and took everything back to basic on my chair I was still not feeling it and it wasn't just a case of leaning forward it was a case of there was nothing kind of connecting with me so uh, yeah um, I'll keep tweaking and if I can get this chair to trial and it makes things better, then awesome. Um, that would be really, really cool. Because I would like to be able to not think about my back and just, you know, get on with things. Um, you know, okay, I'm not going to be a, you know, world-class athlete or anything else. Masters or any other kind of crap. But I... You know, want to be able to kind of go, okay, Sophie, let's go. And even though I might not run, you know, I can certainly give her a bit of a a play or that kind of thing or chasing or, you know, things that you want to do as a parent that doesn't have you feeling so incapacitated with kids or 
who like running and go coming through as <laughs> she yells oh speaking of yelling coming through um she was running around or running up and down the hall this morning when i was getting out of the shower and as she passed the doorway she would yell um hi mommy I think she knows she's being recorded now. And go tearing past. So I grabbed the phone and I recorded her doing this. Hi mommy! As she went whoosh and hi mommy! <laughs> I cracked up. I don't know if you guys will crack up but I'll pop the recording in about here and <laughs> she can have a watch. Excuse the mess on my bookshelf uh, across from the um, bathroom door. And those books? No, not reading them. Um, I know, I, I'm terrible. Um, working a full week next week, who? <laughs> um, I've actually got a reasonably light week, so I might do some tweaking and see what I can do as something a bit extra. Because um, otherwise I'll get distracted and, I don't know, work on geocache puzzles or something. I've asked colleagues for help um, with crosswords and they've been asking then what it's all about. Um, one of them was like alien languages because I can't figure out what the alien language is and he goes send it to me let me see what I can find out uh-huh yeah this is how it all starts <laughs> yes. beware the innocent questions because you know you might get somebody who goes oh, I know what this is and then they go and find one and it goes from there yeah, it can be addictive. Um, actually, on the way back from stitching today, I stopped off at one that I needed to get information from. It was basically um, an international wall of international wall of friendship in Hobart. There's a couple of international flags. I think it's well, no, maybe it wasn't international flags. It was the Australian flag, the Aboriginal flag, and I thought there was a third. Anyway, that's not relevant. But this international wall of friendship, there is a slab of um, A3 kind of size um, plaque from all a whole heap of other countries going, you know, hey, we're with you. This is, you know, you know, just showing all the different nationalities. It's really cool. So there's certain ones that I needed to get dates from so I went and quickly snapped pictures of the countries that I needed and I'll work on working out you know the last number on the Iranian plaque is letter number A and the third number on the Slovenian such and such is letter C and there's about 10 of these that I've got to work out to then give me the next 
waypoint which is the next place that I've got to go to so this is called a multi and it comes in you kind of work your bits in stages and this one will actually take me up towards the mountain um, so there's you know I've got to go to this place to get some information then I've got to go to the next place and get some more information then go to the next place and get some more information and it kind of you know it's how a multi works so it's multi stages and you can have one stage or you can have you know a whole heap of stages but wherever you put the first one the end has to be within a certain range it's got to be within three kilometers or something like that so even i had done a multi cache um you know the, to do with the poo kind of theory that i've told you about before um and had the toilet pool chain and then the toilet seat and then the i don't know toilet roll or something something like that um what am i gonna do yeah let's do the h's so i finished dark green for the month just in time I have a couple of days left over and I can do some Harry Potter so I brought Harry Potter with me to do today at stitching group um, and got some more of the tree that I think Hagrid might be hiding behind done um, so it's good. It's a nice quick stitch. I think it was about 400 stitches dropped a group um, today. So yeah, busy yapping um, and still getting the stitches in. So it was kind of cool. Um, there is plans for a retreat in October up north of Lonnie. And the chatter is that we will get a bus from where I live up north to drive up north so it's a two hour trip so um that could be a lot of fun sitting in the bus and you know maybe knitting in the bus so filled in the expression of interest form that was there and i was like yay so hopefully things don't go too crazy with covid i know the melburnians have um been dealing with an outbreak and they've gone back into lockdown well hopefully things will have well you'd be crazy to think that they'd still be all over the shop by October to be honest they got a handle on it pretty quick the last time and so I think they're gonna be looking for a repeat success of that I feel like I'm sticking to something um, could just be my sleeve catching Mm, do you hear her? Little Miss Innocent was being looked after by Daddy. Daddy. Yeah, and Little Miss Innocent decided to open the zip on my beanbag that lives under her bed. And she let the beans escape. And he sent me a picture just going, sigh. And I responded, well, I didn't actually respond. I reacted going, oh, fuck. And the girl's going, is everything okay? As I bring up the photo to show them. And they, yeah, my three-year-old just did this. <laughs> Snigger. And then I sent him a message saying, a dustpan works really well to pick them up. And he goes, yeah, thanks. And then he asked, did you tell the girls that? Yeah. I said, of course I did. Yeah. Dear. So she had a pile of beans all over the floor he wasn't impressed and I think he was less impressed when they were trying to tidy up and she was playing around dear, oh dear. yes I've had that bean bag for 30 years my sister made it for me 30 oh yeah over 30 years I had it as a teenager um, it's made out of corduroy material and it has been filled and emptied so many times. Um, 
They are amazing. Fun to get in. Hell to get out. <laughs> Have you ever sat in a beanbag? And yes. You're not very ladylike getting out of a beanbag. Let me just say that. Um, you kind of have to roll down onto the ground and then you can kind of clamber out of it sideways, kind of, you kind of, yeah, you log roll out of the thing. Um, but sitting in it, it's like, you know, wriggle your butt down and the support and, oh, it's just bliss. Absolute bliss. I love my beanbag. And I have been known to take them outside and sit on the deck in the sunshine. The problem is you have to have everything within reach because you can't stretch and reach for something. Otherwise you'll unsettle the beans that you've settled and then your seating position will go wrong and you'll end up then down on the ground and then you'll have to actually get out of the beanbag and start all over again. Tell me you have not had to do that. Uh -huh. Um. Now I know this is on other people's channels and I know I'm going to be a little bit vague on this so please go and check out their channels but I have been told that uh, Rebecca, J-Rob, Tia, there may be somebody else, maybe Nana, not too sure, um, but they are doing the 90 step, 90 day step challenge um, with the idea being that you improve the steps that you currently do. Not that you beat somebody else on their steps, you beat yourself. Um, and I don't mean beat yourself up either. So um, there are groups being formed at the moment and they're picking names. Oh, Crashly, I think you'll find as well. So if you watch any of those or you want to get involved in um, getting a bit more motivated, uh, either message me or drop me a comment. You don't have to do it through the group if you don't want to. Um, you could just do it yourself. Um, you can um, keep yourself accountable with me if you like. Um, I have my handy dandy watch, my Tick Watch Pro, which will actually hold my steps each day. So um, my other watch that I used to wear on my left hand is a pain in the ass. It's a Wearbuds watch. It actually holds my headphones and that is brilliant. But from a scorekeeping kind of thing, it doesn't reset each day. Um, so it drives me bonkers. Whereas this one will reset at midnight. So, um, yeah, the plan is to um, beat yourself each day um, over a sustained period. Which, again, three months makes a habit, which makes a lifestyle change. And that's the whole kind of, I think, thinking behind doing something over a longer period. It's all coming into summer for you guys in the Northern Hemisphere, so you have zero excuses. I'm kidding. Um, so yesterday, for instance, I think I did 2,000 steps. That was it. 2,000. That was just pottering around the house. Didn't go out. Um, I don't know why I didn't go out. What were we doing? We were watching. TV and I was really tired yesterday morning, like zonked tired, considered chucking everything off my lap and going and lying down on the couch, oh, sorry, on the bed, but I didn't, um, to the point where I kind of thought, oh, what's going on? Is my iron low? Is my vitamin D low? Yeah, hypochondriac here. So, um, yes, didn't have a lie down, but didn't go out, played around with the pets, um, played around with Sophie, um, hubby brushed my hair last night, I wrapped up a bit of a vlog last night, um, you need to go to Patreon if you want to watch the vlogs, you may get the occasional vlog in the mainstream, but normally if you want to catch up on my weekly vlogs, which may not be weekly, they may be during the week, depending on how tired I've been. As I said, I was wrecked last week. Um, no, I have even more H's, so I can get away with pouring more. I think I was aiming for the whole empty the tray kind of thing. You know that challenge? Yeah. Um, so, 
like it. Today, tonight, when I'm making dinner, I uh, need to also prep my lunch tomorrow. Um, I just need to spend that time being mindful of my food. In the last week, I have uh, lost a couple of kilos, a week, week or two, whatever. Um, I weigh myself every day. I don't necessarily notice when I was that particular number or this particular number, but I have lost two. And it's consistently staying at that lower mark. Um, so that's down to eating less. They actually say exercising alone is responsible for 20% of weight loss only. 80% is how you eat and what you eat. So thinking that you can exercise yourself um, only losing weight is only going to work to a point. After that, you need to look at your food. Um, so I know I need to be mindful. If I don't... So the last week... And okay, this is a bit of a penny pinching thing. Um, in the last couple of weeks, I have been making a third coffee in the morning and putting it into the most awesome thermos that Marcus has. Um, it's just a small, I don't know, 500, no, it wouldn't even be 500. Um, it's a little bit bigger than a normal mug, so it's probably about 300 mil. Um, so I put a third coffee in there and that is my coffee during the day. I have a coffee at the coffee table or out on the deck with you guys. Um, and then I have a coffee at work that will stay warm right through the morning for me because the thermos is awesome. It's actually a 10 hour thermos. I cannot find one on the internet that works as well. Um, but this will keep my coffee warm throughout the morning. And to be honest, I, I drink cold coffee as well, but you are being a bot. Um, the, um, the coffee is a treat and it saves me five bucks um, each day for coffee. And, you know, five coffees, it's, you know, 25 bucks. Um, it all adds up. I've got vet bills now to pay because of the cats. So I need to be responsible with that. It hurts. Being responsible with money hurts. Because Literate Dragon came back in stock and I can't get it. Oh, I need to do my bloody draw and get that, get those prizes out to people. Um, yeah. Being good with your money hurts. Because it's denying, oh, the simple pleasures. What did I just put away? That was the... No. Oh, this is the hourglass. Dirt. Right. This is dryer sheet for static because they came out of the bag and they were appalling last time. Do you remember? And look how beautiful they are now. And that dryer sheet has been sitting out here, so it's not even, you know, sealed off or anything else. Um, and speaking of, my dryer sheets just sit in their box behind me. Um, I might use them when I kit up if they're particularly staticky drills but um, I don't go to it all that often. Where did you go? One sprang off. Oh. No, you were there. That's just rude. I can't see it. And it's not on my pen. Goodness sake back on my three, temporarily. Um, the skinny heads are all I use, by the way, if um, you're interested. Um, while Everlasting tips are brilliant um, and skinny, they are, they're expensive. 40 bucks for one. Um, is an investment and you certainly couldn't necessarily have one in 
multiple pens and work this on a budget. Um, so, yes, I don't have a whole heap of the stainless tips, but I do have a, a couple. And to be honest, the brass tips work just fine. From a single placer point of view, they work absolutely fine. For a multi-placer point of view, yeah, invest. Find your favorite pen and put them in your favoritest pens. You'll have, if you get into these resin pens, okay, I know there's a bit of a kind of thing, you certainly see it with us as creators. Um, we buy, we buy, we, we buy, we buy, and you even may have gone nuts when you started off. You will find that there are certain things that you gravitate towards and you don't budge. Um, I know that I have bought pens and I have never used them. Um, it's just how it is. Um, I find a pen I like and I stick with it. I find a placer I like and I stick with it. Um, so I've got all these pens. I actually should be putting almost the same placer in all of them so I get to have the variety of pens that I'm working with. It's just, I don't know, it's how I work anyway. It may not be how you work. Um, maybe you can go from pen to pen to pen. Um, but it's very much the feel of the pen, um, everything. I'm going to go back to the four because I'm finding there's more fours going down than anything. Um, but this four placer, I'm actually wearing into a bow because of how I place. I um, pop the first one down and then I rock them off. So there's that. And I could potentially even change that up to a five placer. We'll see. Get some of these lower numbers in and go from there. Um, what else has been happening? Um, haven't done much geocaching this week. I've worked on some puzzles. I think it was um, bored one day and was just like, I'm just going to make a list of all the puzzles that I've done and then have a look and see which ones might be easy and which ones might be hard. I've kind of categorized ones that need to be printed out. Um, there's one that looks like it's a word search, but isn't. There's another one that is actually a word search. Um, but I think I had already solved that one or something. It was linked to one of the others. Maybe that's why I was looking at it. Um, one of them is part of a, it's called Chemical Conundrum series. Um, and I think there's like 10 of these. And basically you need to get the chemical number of um, what a molecular weight of, you know, copper, for instance, and it, you have to go onto the periodic table or Google and put in molecular weight of, I think it was carbon was one, and hydrogen was another one, and then you've got to find where to put that number, and you've got to do maths. Then it was talking about What's the integer number of blah, blah? What's the integer number? I think it was hydrogen, hydrogen or something. And I'm going, I should know what this is. No, nope. had to look up integer, whole number. You know, so things like this. So I'm, I'm learning, it's stretching my brain. It's reminding me what I actually learned in maths, you know, way back when we, I was doing maths out of a book where they use the real names of stuff. Um, yeah, things like that. Uh, I might have to haul hubby in for help with some of the maths bits some of them are a little bit kind of technical and it's not that I can't do it it's just that I've forgotten the method of how to do it um I had the same problem with my son 
It's like he would come to me with his high school maths and he'd go, Mom! I'd go, oh God, I forgot how to do this. You tell me how you're meant to do this. My maths book you see at the beginning of each new section had a how-to bit. It was really good. I'm not seeing these in my kids' books. So, you know, having to get them to explain. Anyway, he's now an engineer. So between us, we didn't do too badly. Actually, he's a smart cookie, so he probably did it all himself and would say that he did it all himself. He did advanced maths. I don't know how, I did maths, but not necessarily the advanced bit. And the Irish system was different from the Aussie system anyway, so I'm not sure which bit I might have covered in Ireland that was considered advanced here or not. Hubby did maths in school and he still remembers all that kind of crap because that's where his brain works. Um, he is a um, computer um, genius whiz, whatever. And that's just his jam. And he remembers all these weird funky things that you keep, you know, will kind of say on memes or see in memes even. You know, maths, you know, why do I need these? Well, he'll be able to work out angles and dangles and use them in printing or use them in woodwork and name what it is or, you know, the method and all of that kind of thing. And it's like, oh, see, he's using maths in action. He's not just kind of going, oh yeah, you could do this and do this. Um, and then I've seen other people just kind of go, no, brain fart, cannot see how it works, cannot work out how to get that and that. Yeah. Anywho, I enjoy maths. Sometimes the brain is just a little bit sleepy when it comes to starting them and it's like, oh, no, it's like exercising the brain. And they do say that you should exercise your brain, especially if you've got Alzheimer's. Um, that's why they do brain exercises with them. And I think music is supposed to be good for that kind of thing too. It's the same part of the brain as maths. Um, which is why you'll find that the autism and Asperger kids are so good at all of that kind of stuff because their brain is wired for all of this magic, absolute magic, because you've got this doing this and the formulas and it's just like seeing things in 3D. Um, yes, and, and those kind of skills get mocked by people who don't understand and don't know how numbers work and all of that kind of thing. I dare you to try and find some of these videos where they've got the kids doing like magic maths. I don't know what they actually call them, um, but there's things of, you know, formulas to be able to do these big additions or big multiplications and there's all these tricks and things. You watch those kids, you watch the faces on these kids doing massive maths and they are glowing, you know, just to, you know, beat each other. It's like, I don't know, mental math, men, you know, it's like chess games in their heads. They're just incredible. And it's, a lot of it is tricks. Um, and remembering the sequence or being able to crunch and then minus and all of that in their head and split seconds. It's just, it's amazing to watch them and they're yelling out these answers and they're right, it's disgusting. <coughs> Um, but it's such a boost to self-esteem and everything. It's, it's a really positive interaction with the kids. And, um, yeah, the thing I used to love about maths is that it, you, it's only right or it's wrong. Um, it's like, there is no gray area. If you've got it wrong, you're wrong. And if you've got it right, you've got it right. Um, there's no kind of, it's like English, you know, I can write about the quick jo dog jumping over the fox or I can write about, you know, well, the, you know, the fox was in a bit of a mood today, it didn't have its coffee, so it didn't jump over the fox, over the dog today. So, you know, and I may or may not like that story. I may or may not like that art. I, you know, but with maths, you're right, you're wrong. End of story. And that's what I liked. I liked that... Um, 
for me, um, it was, I don't know, um, there was just no grey. Maybe there was too much grey in my normal life and that's why I liked the black and white in maths. It was like, it didn't move, it didn't change, it just was. Does that make sense? Probably makes more sense to me. Um, in that, you know, one and one makes two. Two and two make four. Um, and it wasn't a case of, um, for me, uh, one, one day mum is going to be sick. The next day she's going to be able to go for a walk. Um, you know, it, there was none of that kind of, and that's what I was dealing with. I was dealing with a dying mum at a young age. Um, you know, and that's maybe why I went, well, I, I would disappear into, um, gonna crack these out and then I will let you go. Um, yeah, I'm watching a friend of mine. I'm not watching him die. Um, I'm watching him going through chemo for a second time. He had bowel cancer and his wife is trying to put on this air of um, gratefulness. So she's posting daily and it includes updates of him, which is really nice to be able to see. Um, you know, and she might be saying, you know, some days he's having a really rough day, he's sleeping all day or whatever as he's, you know, going through the chemo. Um, and how their little boy is dealing with it. And, um, yeah, it's just bringing up memories and all of that kind of thing. They're doing really, really well. If they probably feel like they're not, you know, when they're in the middle of the ups and downs of cancer treatment and, you know, how many extra days have we earned, you know, for the last six months? Um, you know, how many extra days will they have gotten with them? And yeah, it's, it's all kinds of shitty watching them having to deal with it. Um, you know, but they've still got them involved in sports and all that kind of thing. The family is involved. Her older kids are able to help. Um, I'm a little bit jealous with the amount of takeout they seem to have. <laughs> no, seriously. Um, but just being able to share the load between them all. Um, it's good how the family will rally and and that kind of thing and they have fun and they purposely make fun and games and time and all of that kind of thing it's really cool i didn't see it maybe as a kid how dad did that for me um i just saw it as a kid i got sent to boarding school so I didn't have to see mum so sick um, or whatever. Um, I'm waiting for my dad's book to get to me in the mail. His memoirs have been published. My brother has got the first copy. Um, so that will be an interesting read. Um, you know, learning about the man before I came along because he was was he? Um, he was two, three years older than mum. She was 40 when I was born, I think. I can't remember. She's only like within five years older than her. Um, I've just realised I need the hat. That one. Um, Uh, yeah, so he had a life, you know, similar to where I've had a life before Sophie came along. Um, and um, he had one role working in Oxford, you know, as a 
mechanic with Morris and test driving cars and all of that kind of thing. Um, you know, I think they did a 24 hour test where they ran the car around the track for 24 hours and they changed tires and they changed oil and they kept it running and it was just insane kind of stories like that. So, you know, I'm looking forward to, you know, more stories like that. Then he went on, ooh, oops, then he went on and, oh, what have I done? Oopsie, I've got to put those down and they're S's. That was stupid. Wrong one. On the wrong place. I've got them filled in all the hats with the S. And I probably won't be able to find them again. And I'm not even going to bother to frog them. Rip them. No. They're just going to have to stay where they are. Um, so yeah, it's kind of finding out the man that my siblings knew because they knew him from his 20s um, whereas I only knew him from his 40s and pretty much dealing with a sick wife whereas they got the, the healthy versions of both of them. Um, yeah. It'll be interesting. It will be really, really interesting from his perspective how he found life and what he did. And when I was a kid, he travelled an awful lot. Well, I say an awful lot. felt like an awful lot. He would go away on trips quite frequently. He'd come back from um, Russia with Russian eggs and he'd come back from other countries with, you know, Turkish delight and... Um, like real Turkish delight with the corn flour on the outside um, or icing powder or whatever it was I can't remember I never really ate it I didn't like real Turkish delight um, but he would come back with you know ethnic touristy stuff um, he brought eggs from Kiev East, you know chicken eggs um, with the wax kind of dye thingy on them. They were all kinds of cool. Um, oh, he, but he did, he seemed to travel quite a bit. That was a one. It's not, I don't think it's, it looks kind of white. We'll, we'll put it in three. We'll be fine. Yes, it's definitely a three. Okay. Um, I'm doing S. Um, so yeah, looking forward to that. Hopefully he's alive before, or not dead, before I finish reading it. <sighs> Haven't talked to him in ages. Lovely time zone differences. Because by the time it gets to ring him, I'm tired. Um, I know, lousy excuse. And it's quite hard when he's missed so much of, I don't know, if you don't talk about everyday life anymore. It's not like I'm picking up the phone to have, you know, hey, how's it going? And yeah, the weather was really nice tonight. What did you do? And yeah, you, you kind of lose those conversations when you're living internationally and that kind of thing. Um, yeah. But, um, Urgent interruption. Who? Please excuse the viewers. Anything else? Yes. Uh, these are not chicken tit. They are obviously dodo tit. They're huge. Flightless birds. 354 grams. Wow. Too big for a meal on two and a half. No, it's not. Would you like me to cut them in half? No. 300 and what? 354 grams. Yeah, but chicken's got even less going for it than a chop, for instance. Yeah, right. 
But it is a lot, yeah. Uh, um, no, it wouldn't. Yeah. No, 250 would be fine for the three of us, not one. Okay. Yeah. Right, we'll just, we'll just get fat <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, uh, on skinless chicken, yeah. Or is it skin? Yeah, I thought it was... The other thing could be that I use it for lunches. I, like I use the extra as, you know, the next day's lunch. Oh, God, I'm going to put the S's away. Why did I do that? Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up soon. And there's the hat, and I've done all the hat. Um, that was wrong. Anyway. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Gonna do some of the mic and then I'll let you go because you know it's it's that kind of time and I'm hungry. Can't get hangry soon. Um, what am I gonna make for my sandwich tomorrow? I'm kind of thinking egg sandwiches, maybe, 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 maybe. There's one of the ladies does um, egg salad sandwiches nearly every week, and she did curried eggs I think a few times. Oh, they're delicious. The bread is, you know, super fresh and I don't know how she cuts the sandwiches because the bread's not squashed at all. Um, maybe she uses a carving knife, but it was just like, oh, these are yummy. So today she had made a mix of ham and it's called corn relish. I don't know if you've got it in the States. It's basically yellow. It's quite sweet. Um, it's relish made from corn and I think there's cauliflower in it and I'm not sure what else um, is in it. It's lumpy. It's um, it's really good mixed with um, cream cheese and used as a dip. Not good for your waist, not good for your heart, but it's delicious. Um, that's funny. My coach was actually saying, why don't you get some hummus and some you know, dips. You know, I'm kind of thinking, hummus, yuck. The, the look of it is far too healthy. I'm not a big fan of hummus. It wouldn't be a dip that I'd go to in a hurry. And she goes, what about beetroot dip? And I can't, be beetroot dip I like. Beetroot's quite sweet. Um, I like beetroot dip when it's not a cheese-based dip. And she, I was saying, but well, that's the problem. It's cheese-based dip when you go to the supermarket for some. Um, where can, you know, other than making it myself, um, where am I going to get beetroot dip? Um, I'm just kind of going, oh yeah, there's, there's a little market kind of place that does it. So I might go check that out. Um, and, you know, make myself eat beetroot dip as my kind of morning snack. Or could I just have the fruit? Fruit's probably easier because I don't have to think about it. I can just chop some up in the morning. Oh, get off. Um, put it in a bowl and good to go. In a bowl, in a, um, you know, lunch container thing. So it's all ready to go. Oh, heavens above. Now they're not playing ball. Um, but yeah, trying to get some variety in the lunch. And then, of course, it's... Um, it's not pay week, um, so whether I will, they have a thing at work called Fast Food Friday, <coughs> but the problem is we have burgers on Friday nights, um, homemade by Marcus. Last week I had chicken um, in mine because we didn't have mince. Um, pre-made burgers so I had the chicken burger and the other two had regular burger well I say the other two Sophie didn't eat hers she had one piece I'm trying to force feed the one piece into her sometimes she has to have more and it's like <sighs> frustrating I'm trying to get her just to get the different flavor or texture or whatever <coughs> excuse me um, so yeah, there's that. 
You need a little sucker. So yes, that's that's where we're at with that. Okay, I'm going to finish there. I'm trying to figure out what the dot is. The dot. Oops. Oh, you okay? Mm -hmm. The dot, the dot, the dot, nine, three, nine. Oh, okay, so navy and um, there's no black in this. Okay, so navy and and F. Eight two three. Oh, okay. So navy and dark blue. So it's the same as the dress. Is next. No, no chocolate. We're gonna get tea. Oh. I know. No. Yeah. <laughs> gonna have lamb chops. Ooh. And it's getting late. Wow. All right. Wow. We're gonna say goodbye. Wow. Yeah. Chopsy's gonna go rawr. Okay. And then are you gonna say goodbye? Mm -hmm. Are you gonna say goodbye? No. No. No, no. Alright, tacking up. I will talk to you guys probably next week on Weapon Chat. Um if you um do want to see my vlogs, um please sign up on Patreon and you can um, join in on my vlogs there which is a range of things geocaching uh, sunrise um, just general chit chat um, yeah and um, I'll just shoot the breeze with you background stuff maybe things like that um, you might be seeing a how to video how to frame I actually framed my peppermint purple frame from yeah, there we go. Um, bought a cheap frame off the kind of um, dollar kind of store equivalent that we've got here, and um, it wasn't a dollar; it was ten bucks. Uh, but I framed it, and it, it looks fine. And I may even bring it into work. I'll see. I'll have a think about that one. Um, yeah, I've got space on the wall. It's just you know does it fit does it mean something to me or that kind of thing I mean it does I put a year of work into this thing um but now I've got to finish but I've got to show it on camera first <laughs> so it's not going into work until I've done that <laughs> good excuse yeah anyway I'll talk to you soon but yes patreon and there's always a cup of coffee if you want to buy me a coffee which is down the bottom um, but links are all in the description as well. If you're interested in finding out whatever I am getting up to from a stitchy point of view there is a linked document where you can see all of that kind of thing um links to sal's stitch alongs or you know magazines whatever um all in there so you can catch up there and if i haven't given you the answer to something ask me um drop me a comment and i'll make sure that the information is put in there um so that you guys know all right talk to you soon bye for now may the road rise up to meet you May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand.